Welcome to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to focus on using a REST JSON service and the new REST editor in OPI. With the MAF 2.1 release, OPI users can now easily develop applications that interact with REST APIs. The REST service editor provides an iterative process for consuming REST services. The editor allows you to explore existing REST services. You can test or review the service directly from the editor. Once you're happy with the service, you simply click a button to import it as a REST API. You can also create a REST API from a REST service definition that you know. In this case, you define the request in the context of the service path, then add details like the method type, input and output arguments, data types, HTTP headers, and so on. Once the API is defined, you can copy it to the REST client to test the API. Once you have the APIs defined and tested, you generate the REST service POJO bean from the APIs. This is a one-click process. If later you add APIs or change existing APIs, you can simply recreate the REST service bean iteratively from the definition. So now that you have an idea of the process, let's take a look at creating APIs from a REST service. In our example, there are five main services. Get departments, which is a read. Get departments by ID, which is also a read, but returns a single department. Put department by ID, which is an update method. Post department, which is a create method. And delete department by ID, which of course is a delete method. In the sample, I'll show how to create APIs for both read methods and the update method. Creating APIs for the delete and the create are the same as the ones I show. So let's look at how to create those APIs. So before I create a REST service description, I'll show that I do have REST services available. You can see I have REST services and the service returns a list of departments. It also has a get department ID, so I can specify department ID, in this case 20, and it returns a single department. This service also has an update department method. So now that we have a REST service available, I'm going to create a new REST service description. I'm going to name it HR service, and as an address, I'm going to use the address of the service we just looked at. The department service is a get, so I click the button to send the request and see that in the response, I get a status of 200 OK, which means it worked. I also see I have raw content as well as rendered content. The rendered content shows each of the objects that are in the JSON payload. Now that we see the REST client works as expected, I'll import the REST client information. The import creates a REST API from the REST client. There are just a couple of steps. First, the root path needs to exclude the name of the method. Since this request is for a list of departments, I'm naming it Get Department List. Click Finish to create the REST API. Let's take a quick look at the API definition. Looking at the HTTP headers, there aren't any defined. Nothing is defined for input. However, the output is defined as a representation type, and it has a type of Departments 1. That's not a very descriptive name. We can look at the data types and see that the default name is Departments and Departments 1. Departments is the definition of a single department, so I'll rename that to Department. Departments 1 is really a return of a collection of departments, so I'll name that Department List. Now that the name is Department List, if I go back to the REST API, I can see the representation is now Department List. That's all there is to importing a REST client definition. You can also copy a REST API to the REST client for testing your definition. Click the Copy to REST Client icon, and then click Send Request. You can see the REST API works as expected, and the REST JSON payload contains multiple department objects. So the next step is to create another REST client. However, this one is going to use an ID in the path. This service expects an ID and returns a single department based on that ID. When I send the request, I am prompted for the ID. I enter 20, and when I click OK, the return payload contains a single department, 
Department 20. Now that I've seen the Departments by ID work, I'm going to import it, and I'll call this one Get Department by ID. This API is a little different because I'm going to be sending content with the request. On the header tab, I'm adding a header that accepts application JSON. There is nothing specified for the input, but for the output, there is a representation type of department. So we've created a get department list and a get department by ID REST API, both from starting with a REST client and importing as a REST API. So we're going to add one more request, but this time we'll start by creating the REST API. This request will be a put, which is an update. I'll call it update department by ID. Because we're creating the REST API directly, we need to make sure to add all of the correct headers and so on. Add an accept header with application JSON as the value. Also add a content type header with the value of application JSON. Since it is an update, we need to send input and that input will be a representation type of department. The output will also be a representation type of department. That's all there is to building an API for an update. So let's test it. I'll copy it to the REST client. Notice that it is a put and it is by ID. It does have the headers we created. However, it does not have anything in the input, which is required for the update. Luckily, we had just sent the get department by ID request, so the payload from the response is still available. I'll copy the raw content of the single department and paste that into the input as an input body type. All I'll do to this payload is change one of the values. I'll make the department name Gary Marketing. When I click Send Request, it should call the REST service and change that one value. The request prompts me for the department ID and I'll enter 20. And there is the result of the request with the department name changed. Just to prove that it did change the value in the REST service, we'll go back to the REST API tab and select Get Department by ID and copy it to the REST client. Send the request and enter 20 as the ID. This is a completely different request and you can see the results show that the department was updated and persisted. Now that we have the APIs defined, we can create the artifacts that interface with the REST services at runtime. The artifacts include all the Java classes required to interact with the service. The classes include data type classes, which represent the payload, REST API classes, which represent the model JAX RS specified endpoint, and service classes, which are all of the POJOs, which represent the REST API request. All of these classes are created for you and can be recreated anytime the API definitions change. So let's create the artifacts. Now that we've defined the REST APIs, we can generate the artifacts that serve as the interface between the REST JSON service and the application. So click the Generate Artifact icon. The artifacts are Java 1.8 POJOs. We create a connection and next set the Java name to HR. This is used as part of the package naming for the artifacts. Accept the defaults for the generation settings. In the service classes, we select which APIs we want to use for artifact generation. So we'll pick all three that we created, Get Department, Get Department by ID, and Update Department by ID. You now see the list of selected APIs. Click Finish and OP shows the list of files that are affected by generating the artifacts. So click OK to create them. The methods in restservice.java that expect a department ID are generated to expect an object for the ID. We'll change these methods to accept a string instead of an object, since that's what the request will provide. We now have the artifacts that will serve as the interface between the REST JSON services and the application. Now that the artifacts are created, we need to create the data controls based on those artifacts. Data controls are an abstraction of the REST service interface. This abstraction is what your application will use to provide data to the user interface. To create the data controls based on the REST service, you right-click restservice.java and select Model Components, 
Create Data Controls. We accept the default name of REST service and we now have data controls for department ID, department list, and update department by ID. So that's all there is to creating data controls based on a REST JSON service. As you can see, the data controls contain methods for each of the APIs we defined. Now let's build a page that uses those data controls. Since we're focusing on consuming REST JSON services, I've already created a feature, a task flow, and an empty page to get us started with the UI quickly. We'll start by adding components to the page. The first thing we need to do is add a layout component. We're going to add a panel splitter, and we'll add it just after the facet before the end of the panel page. We'll accept the defaults. In the panel splitter, there's something called a navigator facet, and that's what we'll use to show data. Now let's look at the data controls that we built in the REST service. We see department by ID and department list. Inside department list is a department's collection. I'm going to drag the department's collection onto the navigator facet and drop it as a list view. There are a number of layout options for list view. I'm using main subtext and the second variation. For the subordinate text, I'll use department name. We'll set the divider mode to first letter and the divider attribute to department name. Click finish and that gives us a page that consumes a REST JSON service. So let's do a quick run to see what we have so far. Click Debug, Debug Configurations. And I'm going to select the Math configuration and click Debug. On the page, you see that you can click on any departments in the list view, and that's exactly what we wanted. Let's go back to the page. Now we're going to add the details to the panel item. Take the same departments collection and drop it on the panel item as a form. I'll just take all the defaults and click Finish to create the form. Now let's run again. This time, we'll click the Debug button. This will start debug with the last configuration we used. So now we click on any department and see the details displayed in the form on the right. So now the last step. We want to make this form updatable. Since we already have a form, we just drag Update Department by ID to the panel item and drop it as a method button. As you may recall, the method requires two arguments, the ID and the department object. We use the expression editor to set the value of the ID to bindings, department ID, input value. Click OK to accept the value. Next, we need to send the department object to the method. Again, using the expression editor, we set the value to bindings, department's iterator, current row, data provider, and that will be the object. So now that we have the command button, we're ready to run and test. Let's change corporate tax to Gary's corporate tax. Click update department, and as you can see, it was updated. Well, maybe you're thinking, maybe it was, and maybe it wasn't. So to prove that it worked, I'll go back to the REST API and send the get department by ID again for department 130, and as you can see, it was persisted in the REST JSON service. So in this episode, you've seen how you can define APIs using the REST service editor and consume those services on a math page. Thanks for watching this mobile application framework video, and make sure to look for other episodes on this same channel.